Good morning, artists, and welcome back to APS at Home. Uh, my name is Mrs. Rudd, and with me today is another art teacher who will introduce herself right now. Hi, I'm Miss Potter. Nice to see you. <laughs> we are going to do a fun project today after we talk about a favorite artist of mine. Um, his name is Moses, and Moses was an artist from Hawaii, and he was an expert of using recycled materials. So using recycled materials is a good thing for our planet. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of things around your house that you might recycle. We have those wonderful recycling bins that we use here in Albuquerque. So hopefully um, you take advantage of those, recycling cans and paper and things like that. Well, how many of you knew that you can actually make art from recycling materials? Did you know that, Mrs. Potter? Did you know that that's one of my favorite things to do? I think I knew that, because I've seen you do it. <laughs> and she does a wonderful recycled robot project. So what we are going to be doing today is we are going to be making crazy hats. Because I heard a rumor that we might be having a crazy hat day here at APS at home at some point. So um, I thought this would be a great project to do with you all at home. But first, we're going to talk about Moses for a little bit. Moses was known as the Mad Hatter. Does anybody know what story the Mad Hatter comes from? Have any of you heard of Alice in Wonderland? Oh, I was about to say. You were going to answer? I was going to answer All for right. you. All yeah. right. Yes, Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter. He loved to have tea parties. So um, there was a reason why Moses was called the Mad Hatter. And that is because throughout the 1980s, he worked um, in Hawaii, and he created about 250 of these absolutely crazy hats. And many of them were held together with just regular Elmer's white glue, okay? What he used to do is he used to go around to stores and merchants, and he would ask them for extra paper bags that they, you know, they may not have used during the day. And he would collect them, and he would turn them into these beautiful works of art, these recycled hats. He lived in a Chevy van, and he went all over Hawaii, um, and he roamed the beaches, and what he would do is he would ask people to model these hats for him once he completed them. Uh, they would wear them, and he would photograph them. So that is what you are looking at right now. You are looking at these, these beautiful models who would um, model his works of art. He would just, he didn't know these people. He would just walk up to them and ask them these perfect strangers to model these. I like these, this one a lot. I know these fantastic creations. What does this one remind you of, Denise? Ah, it reminds me of sticks or bamboo. Yes, I was just thinking bamboo. How it do you think like he sticks. made it? I think he made little tubes of some kind. I think Maybe he, he rolled them with his hands and stuck them, to get to, stuck them together. I think you might be on to something. I think you might be on to something. So let's look at the one that you just had before that. What do you all at home see in this picture? Have you ever seen a hat that looks like this? Anywhere? What does it remind you of? What does it remind you of? It kind of reminds me of the Pope's hat. I thought so too. I thought so too. It, it looks definitely looks like funny. a Pope hat. Uh -huh. <laughs> I do not know the correct term for that, but it definitely <laughs> looks like the Pope's hat to me. What about the one before that? Oh, that just looks like crazy. That one reminds me of a fan. Yes. Like little handheld fans. And that's actually a technique that we're going to learn once we start working on our hats. Fantastic. And the first one reminds me of a knight. Oh, it just reminds me of a knight. Definitely. Do you think this one was made with a paper bag only? They were all made with paper bags. That is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And white glue. I'm impressed. That looks kind of tricky. I know. I know. So what we're going to be doing today is Mrs. Potter and I are going to teach you various techniques of working with paper. So the art element that we're going to be talking about today is form, okay? And we have form written up here on the vocabulary wall. And when you're talking about form in art, you're talking about something that's three-dimensional. And when something has three dimensions, it has length, it has width, and it also has depth, okay? So those are the three dimensions. When you hear somebody say 3D, that's what they're talking about, length, width, and depth. 
okay? So for instance, my hat that I made last night, um, you can see it's designed all the way around. I took into consideration what it looks like from the top, what it looks like from the bottom, and from all of the sides around the circle, around the base of the hat. So um, we're gonna learn how to do that in just a few minutes. So if I have this um, lacrosse ball and this shape, what do you see is the difference? If I have this form right here, which is known as a sphere, and then this shape, I'm sure you all can identify this shape as a circle, what's the difference? Can you see the difference if I hold it like this? What about if I turn the circle to the side like this? Can you see the difference? Well, what I'm seeing is that this one is flat and this one is round. That's right, okay? So this shape has two dimensions. This one has the height and the width. It does not have the depth. This one is a form. It's a sphere. So it has all three dimensions. So that's the difference. If you hear somebody talking about 2D, generally they're talking about something flat. If you hear somebody talking about 3D, you're generally talking about something that has form. What would you call, Mrs. Potter, what would you call a three-dimensional triangle? I would call that a pyramid. Very good. What about... Let's see, a three-dimensional square. I would call that a cube. Yes, ma'am, very good. So there's all different types of um, forms that you can sort of compare with two-dimensional shapes. Okay, so the last time I was here, we talked about items that you might have in your home studio, and those are items that we're gonna be using today. So uh, let's take a little bit of, let's do a little bit of review. So I'm hoping you uh, may have access to pencils or a pen. You could use a pen for this. Um, there's some colored pencils right here if that's what you have handy. So what you're gonna need these for is this is going to be a tool that you're going to use to roll and to curl, okay? So you're gonna need something round, okay? If you can get your hands on a stapler, that's a good thing too because we're gonna be doing a lot of attaching um, so we can use the stapler or we can use um, scotch tape. If you have any scotch tape available, that's perfect. If you have masking tape handy, you can use that. Um, if all you have is string, you can use that too. You just need something that's going to be able to hold things together. And even if you have a glue stick, that'll work too, okay? You need to be able to get your hands on a pair of scissors. Okay, if you have kid scissors or maybe your adult has scissors that you could borrow, okay, so you're going to need scissors. What if I don't have scissors? Well, I'll tell you what, you can also tear things, with okay, hands. with your hands, yes. So if you don't have scissors, don't worry because I'm going to be showing you options when I'm going to be doing the demonstration on making the hats, okay? So see if you can get scissors. Um, you're going to need, if, you, if your family gets newspapers or if you can find newspapers, that's wonderful. We're going to be using some, uh, recycling some newspapers. We have these wonderful paper bags. Okay, you can use paper bags for this project. As you can see over here, this poster is completely made from paper bags. Okay, so a paper bag would be great to get your hands on. Um, so I'm going to give you all just a minute to locate those materials before you get back to your artist studio, and I will do the demonstration. Okay. What can I have? I have paper. Do you need anything? I have my pencil. Okay. Maybe I can have some tape. Need some tape? I'll have some tape. Yeah. And scissors? I'll use my hands. Oh. I'll tear. Oh, okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. So again, you can get anything you need to um, roll around, a pencil, a pen, colored pencil, a marker would work, a Sharpie, anything that you can roll around. Okay, I think we might be ready to make some art. What do you think? I am super ready to okay. make some art. The most important things when you're making these crazy hats is going to be the base of your hat. Okay, think about if you were an engineer. If you wanted something to be really sturdy and stand up, you wanted a good base. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to make right now, okay? So I'm gonna take my newspaper, which you can either tear, and we can 
Tear it like so. Okay. Okay. I have some paper. Then, and I like newspapers because they come in sort of four parts with these great folds that you can just rip. So and I you want just to rip it on the fold. Rip it on the fold. Okay. Right there. Easy as pie. Okay. And if you're more comfortable cutting, you can do that as well. I would just take my scissors. And I would consider that fold as a line. And I would just cut right on that line. How many pieces of paper do I need? Oh, you probably need about, I would say, maybe six to 10. Okay. So you might need to do a little bit of more cutting. So far, I have one, two, and three, four. Okay. I have my stack of paper. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I got ten. So I think I'm ready to go. Give them a second to catch up. Okay, so once you have your sections of paper, what you're gonna need next is your tape or your stapler or your glue, okay? And you're gonna need something to roll around. So I'm gonna use this nice big chubby pencil. I like these because it's easy to get your fingers around. So the first technique that we're gonna talk about on this poster is we're gonna be making tubes. Okay, we're gonna be making tubes of paper. Just gonna take my pencil and I'm going to go in the corner and I'm gonna roll diagonally oh. down the paper. Now, this might be hard for you to do in the air like Mrs. Potter and I are doing. So you can put your paper on your desk or on the floor and just roll. Now, the secret is not to roll the tube too tight. What do you think will happen if the tube's too tight? My pencil will get stuck. Right, and you don't want your pencil to get stuck because we need to sort of be able to manipulate the tube and bend the tube to go around the head. If my pencil is still stuck in there, that won't happen. So you wanna make sure that your pencil can drop right out, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some tape. You could also put some glue underneath there. And what you're gonna have is you have this little sort of triangle right here. Mm -hmm. I wanna tape that down okay. to the rest of the tube. All right. Okay. So we wanna make about six of these. Six tubes. Okay. Just to cover our bases. I like rolling tubes. I know, they're I very- I find it relaxing. Yes, it is very relaxing. Do all of my tubes have to be the same size? Not necessarily. Ooh, I might make some bigger tubes. Yep, you can make fatter tubes, skinny tubes. The bigger your tool that you're using on the inside, the bigger the tube will be, okay. newspaper tube. It's like a game trying to get your pencil out. I know, exactly. Okay. See, I'm gonna show what it looks like when I roll around a skinnier pencil. And I am going to use this big old marker I found. All right. Let's see how different they look. Now, you can also do this. If you don't have any newspapers at home, you can use printer paper, you can use an envelope, and in fact, I'll show you how to do that right now with an envelope. Oh. Where did I put my tape? There it is. I lost my marker. So if all I have is an envelope, some old junk mail, we can use that too. Just have to make sure it's flat. So I'd cut the two sides, like so. You can make art pretty much out of anything, don't you think? I absolutely agree. Yep. So That's here I have a nice flat envelope that I'm gonna roll around my pencil. I have all these different sizes now. Look at my big tube that I made with the marker. Nice job. You can use it as a little telescope. That's right. You can add that to your hat later. One, two, three. Okay. So you wanna make sure you're getting six tubes just to make sure we have enough. So here's my envelope tube. It's a work tube. This time I think I'm gonna use a staple. Hmm. There we go. These would be really long claws. Oh yeah, big time. Do you think I could use something like a card, like that kind of paper? A card might be a little heavy to roll around something, but 
You might be able to use the card for decorations later. Okay. If maybe there was a pretty picture of like a flower on the card, you could cut the flower out and add it to the hat. That's an excellent idea. Thank you. Mm, yeah. You want to make sure that the paper that you're using is fairly easy to roll. You want it to be thin. Right. You want it to mm -hmm. be thin. One, two, three, four, five. One more for me. I think I'll use masking tape with this too. So whatever you have at home to sort of close these tubes is great. Masking tape can even be used for decoration. I love masking tape. You can tape. make patterns with masking tape. Okay, so the very next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating the headband part of the hat. So I'm gonna take two of my tubes. Okay. And you sort of put them together. You could put them one inside the other. You could put them one on top of the other. However you want to do that. Look, mine going real nice. One goes right into the other. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to take either tape or staple and attach those two together. Like so. So you have nice, nice, long, continuous tubes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to work the newspaper a little bit with my hand to kind of soften it up, have it my bend a little better. Flatten it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, kind of flattening it. And I'm going to put it around my head, like so. Because I want my hat to fit snugly on my head. I don't want it falling in my eyes like oh, that. Oh, look how big my head is. It just about doesn't oh, fit. Oh, goodness, is that big brain? Is that big brain, Mrs. Potter? Oh, boy. All right. So I'm going to take the staple, and I'm going to close it. Or I will use tape. Use your tape to close it off. Now I'm going to double check and make sure, make sure it still fits. Now, would you say that has form yet? Uh, getting there. Right? It's getting there. Getting we're, there. We're starting to form. Okay. So we have a headband. Ta-da! I Very feel nice. like it's a snug. princess. Does it fit? I think it fits real okay. well. You can make your hat into tiara if you wanted to. <gasps> I feel like a princess today. All right. Play. Do it. Do it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create... Yes. I'm going to create the upper portion of the hat or the base. Now you can see it a little bit better on the hat that my daughter made over here. Ooh. Oh, yep. yep. There you go. Hers is a little shorter base. She used one tube crisscrossed either way, and I used Two crisscross either way. So if you use two tubes together, it makes a taller hat. Okay, so you can make a hat that's either taller or shorter. Mm. So I'm going to go with a shorter hat. I want a taller hat. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one side of my hat, and I'm going to put the tube on the band, and I'm going to secure it with either tape or a staple. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. Check. Got one? Yes. Okay. It's very fluffy. Then again, I'm going to kind of soften up the tube a little. And I'm going to go across the top. All the way to the other side? All the way to the other side. Okay. I'm going to bend a little flap over. And I'm going to attach. So it ends up looking like a semicircle or a dome. It's like a purse or an or arch. A right, exactly. Or a handle. Okay? The other one is going to be crisscrossing or perpendicular to the first one. Does that help support my hat? It does. It helps support your hat. This seems so like whatever an you want step. to add to your hat. Okay. So, if you wanted a taller hat, and I will use my envelope here, my envelope tube, you would just join these two tubes together like you did with the headband. Oh. You would fold it over, and you see how it gives it a height? Hmm. It's like a hat you would find in Whoville. That's right, it's a Whoville hat. 
Okay, so then secure with whatever you have to secure. I love how in art you can really use anything. I know, you really can. I mean, newspaper? You just could use newspaper for paper mache. You just have newspaper to have some imagination. That's right. Okay. Now I find sometimes one piece of tape isn't quite enough. And I need to add a couple more. Excellent. Okay. And again, your second tube can be shorter and your first one can be larger, okay? And with my hat, I sort of added, because I wanted this look, I added a bunch of them, kind of crisscrossing, crisscrossing over and over and over again. So this made my hat really sturdy, I noticed, as I was working. So that's an option, too. You can have a bunch of tubes over, going over the top of your head, if that's a look that you want in the design of your hat, okay? Now, let's talk about making 2D paper into 3D forms. It's that actually, sounds awesome. I know, it's actually a little easier than you might think, and there's a number of different ways to do that, which um, both Mrs. Potter and I will tell you right now. So, when you're adding decorations to your hat, if you have um, brown paper, that's great. You can still work with the newspaper too, if that's what you have. We want you working with what you have. So, in order to make this bag into something usable, I'm going to cut or tear right along these fold lines. And Mine tore a little bit, and that's okay. Uh oh, that is okay. So, what you end up with is a nice flat piece of paper. Okay? What I really like are these handles. Oh, I use these in the design of my hat. It's a nice sturdy piece of paper and it's already made into a strip that you don't even need to cut. So I just take the strips off and I use them. I use them all around the, sort of the side of my hat. That's a great idea. So these are pretty cool. Not all bags have them though. I've noticed that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to cut the paper into strips. Maybe I want some fatter strips. Maybe I want some skinny ones. And if you don't have scissors, I don't have scissors, you can take your fingers and tear your strips down. Maybe I don't want my lines to be straight. Maybe I want curvy lines. Just like that. This will be an artistic strip. Plus, tearing the paper feels kind of good. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'll make a skinny strip. So one technique that Moses used a lot with his hats, and if you take a look at some of these um, pictures right here, there's more over here, he ended up making the bags really soft. So what he did was he used this te technique right here, and that's just crumpling a piece of paper, which also feels really good, by the way. It does. Yeah. So if you just take your piece of paper and you just crumble it up, just crumple it. Makes me feel like the Hulk. That's right. Just really, really crumple it. And what happens when you crumple a piece of paper is that paper is made from something called fibers. Those fibers break down and crushing those fibers makes it soft, almost like a fabric, mm. depending on how, how much you crush it. You can really get that paper into a soft, pliable, bendable material. Does it help that my hands are warm? It helps. I think so. <laughs> I like the way the texture feels. Yep. So what he would then do is he would cover his, whatever his armature looked like, and that's a, that's a big armature, armature. You know what armature means? I don't, will you tell me? An armature is sort of the insides of a sculpture that gives it shape and support. So. This is an armature for our hat because whatever we're going to be adding to it is going to be on the outside of it. This helps give it form. Excellent. Okay. So what he would do is he might use this, this sort of crumpled piece of paper that looks like fabric and he might just decide to cover his entire hat with it. I bet that would make the 
hat look more solid. Yep. So what you would do if that's a look that you want with your hat, you would just sort of attach pieces together and just sort of build around and up, okay, as you go. If you have a shorter hat, you would only have a sort of a short area to cover, not as much, not as much height. I like that. All right, so that is crumbly. Can I show the next one? Absolutely. This is one of my favorite paper techniques because I'm a paper folder, and in that art world, it's called origami. But there's something called a pleat fold. And if you look really close at it, do you see how it's very zigzaggy? That's because of how we fold it. And it's sort of a little up and down. So we go forward, backward, forward, backward, smush, smush. And I keep doing this all the way down, forward and backward, and forward and backward. And it's okay if they're kind of different sized as you go down. But what's cool is when you open it, these always reminded me of really cool little stairs for a mouse house. It also reminds me of a musical instrument. An accordion. That's right. I can almost hear it playing. This is also known as the accordion fold. Well, I see why. That's right. Even if I glued these two pieces together, it would look kind of like a star. Hey. Very nice. There's all kinds of shapes you can do with this, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I can see star. where I want to put it on my hat, Mine's too. a wonky star. Mine looks like a... <laughs> but I, I would make like an it. excellent cookie if it was a cookie cutter. Right, exactly. It looks like the star that goes on top of a tree. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to add my little zigzaggy pleated piece of paper over here on the front of my hat because I just think it looks cool. And sometimes in art, you make choices just because that's what you want it to look like. I think I'm going to have mine coming down, sort of like hair. Oh, I bet you could do a couple pieces like that. Yeah. That's a very creative idea. Yep. Maybe my smaller piece. I think I want one more over on this side, too. Mostly because I just want to keep pleat folding. I can do it all day. Well, that's right. So mine has a couple of zigzag lines. Looks like a line. It really does. It's amazing how you can make lines 3D, huh? Yes. Something that starts out so flat. That's right. Becomes something that is so 3D. I like that. I think okay. your hat's coming out real nice. Thanks. Yours, too. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to show one of my favorite techniques, and that's curling. Ooh. How many of you have used a curling iron before? Okay. <laughs> not very this well. This is the same concept, except we're not going to be using a hot curling iron. We're just going to be using a pencil or a pen or a marker. Okay? Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just roll it, sort of like the way we made our tubes. And just roll it and roll it. I wonder what's going to happen. Like so. So you get a curl. And then if I do the other side, sort of coming in the same way. Aha. What letter does that remind you of? What letter? Yours looks like it. An E. Mine and looks more like, like, like a P, maybe, Ooh, or, a, or a J. Well, this is called a C curl. A C curl. That's right, because when you're done with it, it kind of ends up looking like a C. Oh. I don't know if it's curving back on itself. It looks like it. Nifty. There's another way to do it. I can roll it this way. Okay. And then you roll it the opposite way. What letter do you think it's going to look like? Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to let our little friends guess first, but I'm going to say an S. Ha-ha. Guess what it's called? An S curl? That's correct. It's called an S curl. Excellent. Okay. So these are things that can be added to your hat as well. It reminds me of a squirrel tail. Squirrel <laughs> tail. S for squirrel. <laughs> I think I'm going to share your idea and put these hanging off the bottom because I liked what you did. Yeah, it looks like curly hair. And artists share ideas sometimes. That's right. I want one over here. Oh, I want one over here, too. It's getting crazier. I got I know. That's why I call this lesson Crazy Hats. Oh, I lost my curl. That's okay. I'll make another one. <laughs> I 
All right. Okay. Do you want to show our friends how to make fringe? Oh, That's one yes. of my favorites, too. Fringe, right over here, looks just like that. Fringe you might find on the bottom of a purse or a shirt. So, what I would do for this one, may I borrow your scissors, Absolutely. Please? Thank you. I'll tear. To make fringe, you find the bottom edge of your paper, and you make straight cuts that go up and down vertical next to each other. They can be close, they can be far, but you just want to go up, up, up. And Miss Rudd is tearing hers. You can do it either way. And you go all the way along the edge. And when you're done, they kind of flitter about like little fringes. Excellent if you wanted to make bangs for your hat. <laughs> Great. You could even sort of fold them or curl them or bend them. You can twist them. You're the artist. There's a lot of different things you can do with these little fringy guys. Mine remind me of eyelashes. Oh, those are very curled mm -hmm. eyelashes. I'm impressed. I'm curl them some more too. I think I am going to put mine on the back of my hat so I have a little party in the back too. Nice. <laughs> That's now there's fringe. something that I like to do with um, fringed paper and I call it the firecracker. Oh, that sounds really fun. It also looks like a flower, and I have one um, added into the front of my hat right there. Oh, okay. And this actually combines a couple of different paper techniques. And what you do to make a firecracker or a flower is you roll it like so. So roll up that entire fringy piece of paper. Oh. Do it if I can hold on to stuff. Look at that. And it ends up looking sort of like a flower. Or and then I can cracker. bend these out. And then you bend them out. I would love to just dip that in paint. Right. It could be like a little paintbrush. Yep. So That's then awesome. you can add that. <sighs> Where do I want to sort add Sort of reminds that? me of, you know, the, the guards that have those floops on the... The little floops? The floops on their hats <laughs> in floops England. Floops is a scientific term for That's that. right. <laughs> Oops. I don't know where I want mine. I just kind of want to hold it. Mm -hmm. like now there's there. another technique, and this is for you, um, you artists who love to make 3D shapes or forms, rather. And um, so what I'm going to show you is something called a tab. So if I have a square of paper, and I sort of want to make a tube out of it. So this is going to be a big tube. Not like our little roll tubes. It's going to be a big tube. You see? Okay. Oh, that looks like something to me. What? It looks like the tube inside the toilet paper rolls. It does, which you can also use on these hats, because I'm sure people have plenty of those around <laughs> at this point in time. Tape. I like this because it's not very messy. Right. Now, I've seen a lot of artists that try to take a tube like this and just either put glue, like a glue on the bottom and then try to make it stick. It doesn't really work very it well. It doesn't work very well. Because remember, we're sort of engineers here, too, and we want whatever we're sticking on to have a nice, secure base. So in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to make tabs. So I'm just going to take scissors, and I'm going to cut, oh, about an inch on the bottom and I'm going to go around and I'm just going to make these tabs. How many cuts are you going to make? You can make five or six, oh. depending on how many tabs you want. So if I were to glue this, say, at the top of my hat, if I had a nice flat area, see how strong that base is? Ooh. It would not fall off. Yeah, I could put things coming out of the tube. Much easier to lay down flat. That's right. And much easier to glue down. You can use a lot of glue on there to get it secure. That would make a fine top to a top hat. Absolutely. In fact, it might be how top hats are made. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to add mine at the top because I feel like later if I found a pretty flower, I could stick it on the top and add it to my hat. Nice. Okie dokie. Let's see, what else do we have here? Got a couple left, which are kind of similar. How about the loop-de-loops? Loops. 
So for the loops, I need to cut some more strips of paper because I've been having such a good time that I used them all. So I'm gonna cut myself some little loop-de-loop -loop papers right here. Now there's a lot of different ways you could make loops. I could take my two edges and just stick them together like this. I could staple it, I could tape it. You could make a little teardrop shape or a petal for a flower. This Ooh. is one way I could loop it. I like that idea. Something else that I can do is make a chain of loops. <gasps> yes. Oh, it's about to get fancy. Paper chains. So I'm gonna tape my little loop together here. And if I wanted to start a chain, I just sneak it right on in there. And then I could tape that one together. And you could make that as big as you wanted to. You could add as many little chains as you wanted. I've seen him hit the floor. I believe it. Mm -hmm. At my school, at Alvarado, we made a bunch of these little loop-de-loops for the fall carnival. And there was a big decoration all over school and it covered the whole area. Because you can do this with so many different kinds of papers and colors. Sometimes it's nice decoration just to have around the house anyways. Very cool. Because sometimes when you make art, you get new ideas. I would say most of the time when you make art, you end up with new ideas. I like the loops. I love that. That reminds me of a peacock. There you go. I think I'll add it right on top of my curl Fantastic. right here. Mm. Oh, I think I'm going to use mine to connect my little pieces together. I don't know if you can see that, artist. There it is. Lots okay. Focus. So what you would do um, from this point forward is continue to cover your hat with whatever um, types of paper forms that you would like to. Awesome, look how cool my hat's coming out. No, so it ends up- It's, it's crazy. Finish. Oh, there's my daughter. She likes the paper chains too, see? <laughs> I like how hers looks like it kind of has horns on it. Yep, it doesn't quite fit my head. <laughs> I mean, it still looks pretty awesome. I though. know, but I kind of <laughs> like the paper chain in the front. Excellent. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another way to make a base, which is a little bit easier. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna recycle one of my visuals here. Ooh, it's gonna look extra pretty. Because a good thing to use for this um, is you can use a piece of construction paper, any color that you would like. Um, you could also use the paper bag if you have a small enough head, because this is just a little bit shorter. Can you see it's a little bit shorter? Mm -hmm. What we need are a couple of long sides here, okay? So I'm gonna draw in pen and show you what lines you're gonna need to cut. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna go, you don't have to draw, you're just gonna have to cut it. You're gonna go diagonally in from the corners. Like so. Okay. Okay. Diagonally. Now you want to make sure that the lines don't crisscross or touch. That's very important and you'll see why in just a minute. Mm, does this look good? Great. Okay. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right along those lines. Okay. One of my lines is a little bit off, so I'm just gonna. Mine are a little wonky. That's all right. But the important thing is, is that the lines don't touch because if the lines touch and you cut, what's gonna happen? They're gonna cut off. That's right, you're gonna cut off the triangle. And we need the triangle. The triangle is very important to be attached to this hat. Am I close enough to the center on my cuts? I think so, yes you are. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, and you'll notice on a rectangle like this, which is 2D, two-dimensional, we have this long vertical line and the shorter horizontal line. You see that? Okay, mm -hmm. we have the height and we have the width, mm -hmm. okay? So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold in these long sides. Okay. Like so. And those triangles, we're gonna crisscross. Are their edges gonna match? Their edges can match, or you can take creative license and make it a little crisscrossy. Cool, okay. Whatever you want. And then I'm going to staple or tape. I'll tape. 
one side. Okay, all right. Now, remember with our other hat, we had to measure our head? Yes. Okay. We're gonna do that too. Okay. Got it? Yep. All right. <laughs> How so we got the crystal. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. So hopefully this will fit around my head. Looks like it has wings. Ta-da. All right. Got it. Now you have your base. Ha ha. We don't just stop there. We're artists. We can never stop That's because right. we're artists. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm, again, I'm going to show you with the marker that I'm going to cut lines. I wish I'd done this on the white side. I'm going to cut lines. Any Five kind of line? line. Any kind you want. Curvy lines? Curvy lines, zigzag lines. But the secret is you do not want them to cross. And you do not want them to touch this edge right here. Can some be shorter than the others? A little bit. You kind of want them the same. Same length. And you don't want to go all the way through because what will happen if I go all the way through? You'll just cut that whole thing in half. You cut it in half and it won't, it won't work. Okay. So then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut those lines. How many lines did you say? I did five, but whatever you can fit in there. If you can do four, that's good. I did six. Six will work. Twenty might be a little much. It's like little tentacles on an ocean creature. That's right. This reminds me a whole lot of when we cut the fringe. Right. It's very much that's like fringe. It like. It's sort of like wide fringe. And should I do it on both sides? Do it on both sides. Okay. I'm not going to draw my lines on this time. I'm feeling brave, and I'm just going to make my cuts. Feeling confident? Feeling more confident, All yeah. All right. And I just want to be careful not to cut them off, because these... I can't wait to see what this ends up looking like. All right, so here I have fringe on one side, fringe on the other side. Now, with these flaps... We can do exactly what we did with the paper on our other hat, okay? We can combine any of these techniques. So what you can try, one thing I like to do is bring a couple of the flaps up and over. Mm -hmm. And I can connect them? Because it gives the hat a little bit of height. Yep. You can connect it with tape. I'll okay. tape this time. I've been using a stapler, so I'll give the stapler a rest. And I'll tape it. You can do that pleat fold. That Mrs. Potter showed you. Good choice. Back and forth, back and forth. This is a good little workout for my hands. I know, right? Oh, look, my little pleat fold sticks straight up. <laughs> I'm going to do that on the other side, too. So here I have two pleat folds. I'm going to join those together sort of to make a point. You can join them together like this to make a point. You could join them around the top like this to sort of make an arch. I'm going to leave mine sticking up because they remind me of wings a little bit. Let's you can also add more strips if you want to. So I can make it taller. You can make it taller. I was just wondering how I was going to do that. That's right. You can add that paper chain. Remember these cool little handles that I found earlier? Yeah. Yes. Ew. I'm going to tape these opposite sides together. I'm so glad I have these bags at home. They Me were just kind of sitting there next to my washing machine. I was wondering what to do with them. I think paper and cardboard are the greatest materials you can have as an artist. That's right. Paper is an inexpensive sculptural material. Connected over here. Oh, my hat's getting crazy. Mm -hmm. I think I'm actually going to be ready for crazy hat day. Are you? I was worried that I wasn't going to be, but now I'm good. Now you're going to have two crazy hats. 
I am going to have two crazy hats. I wonder if I could wear them at the same time. No, that's too crazy. <laughs> that's a little crazy. <laughs> so I really like the paper chain idea, so I'm just going to add. I want to curl some of mine. That pencil. And see how it works on this thicker paper. I can see why Moses had all these people that wanted to wear these hats. I know. He had some pretty cool hats. Oh. Mine kind of reminds me of a crab. Huh. Like a little hermit crab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so one thing I think, um, when I look at my hat compared to the hats that he made, I mean, I kind of get a little jealous because his hats are really good. You know? I kind of wonder what, why that happened. I think that he may have done this a lot. I think that he practiced a lot. I know. And worked with his hands a lot. Yep. He found out new ways to attach paper together. He found out new ways to manipulate paper. So look at this one. Look at all these rolls. Wow. I know. There's hundreds of them. And I pretty much just have about, I don't know, 10 pieces of papers on, paper on this one. I mean, it's already looking pretty awesome, though. Yeah. Remember, you. you can't compare yourself to anyone else because you're your own artist. That's true. That's true. We share ideas, but really and truly, what's in our hearts is in our hearts. I mean, a little fan. Does practice make perfect? I don't There's know. There's no it such thing as perfect. <laughs> I know. It just makes you better. Yeah. That just makes you better. And it makes you feel better about what you're doing. I've always had problems with that expression. <laughs> hmm. So one thing I was thinking about um, Ooh, right there. when I was designing this lesson was how art can reflect everyday life. You can I'm, make your own hat. You can make your hat. You can make your own hat. How many people, have, how many of you wear hats? Some people might wear a baseball hat on a daily basis with your favorite sports team or maybe next time I go running, I'll put this on top of my baseball cap. I would look silly. And I'll be the crazy hat lady. How many of you wear a hat to stay warm in the winter time? There's all different types of uses for hats, but Moses sort of discovered that hats can be an art form. I like that. I like the crumpling. The crumpling is I satisfying. I like learning about Moses. Yeah. He was an interesting guy. And all of these hats are actually um, in a museum in San Diego in part of their, or San Francisco, I can't remember which one, as part of their permanent collection. They're original hats? They are original hats. And they are considered objects of art and are in a museum. That's magnificent. I know. I want to do something with the front of my hat. I'm feeling brave and bold. I'm going to cut it. Stick it up like a little unicorn horn. Let's see. So perhaps the most important part of this whole process is modeling your hat. You must model your hat. You must walk around and say hello. <laughs> Look when at I hat. was in the art classroom, I had my kids walk around the, the um, school. They had a like hat a parade. parade. That's right. That sounds like so much fun. I know. I don't know which hat I like better. I might, I might like this hat better. I can't decide. I like both of my hats. What now, one um, paper technique that I didn't talk about that I used on my hat is paper weaving. Oh, I would like to know more about that. Yeah, so can you help me make a couple of tubes? Yes, we'll I make sure a couple can. of tubes and I will show how to do some weaving. Perfect. You know, weaving is not my strongest area as an artist, so that's probably something that I should practice. Right. Okay, I have one tube left over from before. So if we roll a couple of quick tubes here. Okay. Okay. And remember how I said that masking tape can be used for decoration? Yes. Masking tape reminds me a little of paper in that you can tear it into thicker, thin strips. How you can many tubes do we need? We need about, oh, five or six. Okay. You can tear masking tapes into strips and add it to your hat for stripes. There's all different kinds and colors of masking tape. 
If you have washi tape at home, you can use washi tape. That's that, that's that tape that has fun decorations on it and patterns. So you can use um, what you have to add the fine details to your hat. So with the paper weaving, what I did, okay, was I had, I can't remember how many I had, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different um, tubes, which left an odd number of spaces, which is very important. So in between, right. you wrapped around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what I did on my hat was I took those strips of the handles from the bag, and I joined them together, and I sewed them, I wove them in and out, okay? Over and under. Those are two of the most important words in weaving, over and under. So I just took my strips of paper, I went under one, and over another, and over one, and under another. That's part of what made your hat so stable. That's right. So it made it nice and strong. It gave it a nice stable base. And if, the, um, if it's not long enough, you can just add a tube to go around. Perfect. There's all kinds of things you can do with these tubes. So just a little review about what we talked about today. We talked about a lot today. Mrs. We did. Potter. We sure did. Oh my gosh, we talked about all about all different types of um, paper manipulation. Manipulation, that's a big word. It is. It just means to work it and to change something, okay? So we learned how to crumple and pleat and curl. We learned how to do loops and fringe. fringe. Uh, tubes, shapes, or prisms, and how to make some tabs to do sort of a strong base for our, um, our bigger shapes. Um, we had all kinds of exciting vocabulary, too. We talked about form. Remember, form is something that has uh, length and width and depth, okay? So those are the three dimensions. When something has form, you want to make sure that you're considering it from all sides. When I was designing my hat, I was, you know, looking at it from all sides. Does it look good in the front? Does it look good in the back? Does it look good on the top? So when you're having a two-dimensional shape, it's flat, okay? These hats are definitely not flat. They're not flat at not all. Not at all. I have a pretty round head. <laughs> And we've also learned that recycling materials or recycled materials can be made into art objects, yeah. whether it's a hat or whether it's a robot like you make in your classroom. And I learned about a new artist, Moses, and his paper bag hats. And now I want to go home and teach someone else how to make paper bags, paper bag hats. That's right. So what types of things can you make that you have in your home out of recycled materials? Cardboard boxes work really well, too. They do. My daughter likes to make spaceships out of those. I made a spaceship the other day. Spaceships are great because they can take you places. They can. Art can take you places, too. You could wear your hat while you went off on your spaceship. That's right. Do not forget to model your hat. That is the most important part of this project. <clears throat> oh, you need to sorry. model your hat. So sorry. Take your favorite. I like I don't know. I like my daughter's, but it doesn't fit. So I'm just going to put my hat on right now. Well, I had a lovely time making art with you today, Ms. Red. I really appreciate you coming to do this with um, me and our students at home. And we would like to thank you for joining us today um, at, at Home with APS. And we are from the Fine Arts Department, and we're happy that you made art with us today. See you next time.